In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to carry out the Mann-Whitney test using SPSS. Basically, the Mann-Whitney test is a non-parametric uh, alternative to the standard uh, independent samples t-test, where you are comparing two groups um, on an outcome variable that is assumed to be continuous. Uh, with the independent samples t-test, you're basically comparing uh, the, the groups uh, with respect to uh, means. Uh, so you're actually testing a mean difference on the dependent variable. In the context of the Mann-Whitney test, you're comparing two groups uh, on a rank, uh, ranked dependent variable. So to demonstrate, uh, first I'm going to start off with a small data set uh, containing uh, 16 data points. We have uh, essentially uh, an independent variable uh, group, which when we look at it, uh, is coded 1 for treatment group, 2 for control group. The dependent variable you'll notice uh, is achieve, and it's actually a scale variable in this particular data set. So uh, to kind of show you, or to kind of juxtapose this against the independent samples t-test, let me just show you the independent samples t first, where we're comparing the means uh, between the two groups on achievement. Uh, so if we were carrying out the independent samples t-test, we'll just go to analyze, compare means, independent samples t-test, We'd move group over to the grouping variable box, uh, the dependent variable achieve over to the test box. Under grouping variables, we'll have to define the groups using the values that appear in the data set on, for group. So I'll just use one and two, continue, and then click on OK. And so now you can see that we have our independent samples t-test results with the means on the achieve variable for the two groups. So you can see the treatment group mean is 11.375, for the control group, it's 9.375. And so down here, you can see that we have our t-test results, um, which is used to test whether there's a significant difference between the groups in terms of the means. Now, with respect to the um, Mann-Whitney, to carry this out, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Analyze, go down to Non-Parametric Tests, go to Legacy Dialogs, and then go down to Two Independent Samples. We'll click on that. We'll move our dependent variable over to the test variables list box and our independent variable to the grouping box. We'll click on define groups and we'll put the uh, values in as we did before. So I have one and two respectively. Click on continue. You'll notice that uh, the test type is set uh, for Man Whitney. And so that's what we want to stick with. So in this particular case, I'll click on OK. And so now you'll notice that we get, um, you'll, Instead of the means on the dependent variable, what we get are mean ranks. Um, and so essentially what happens is, uh, when we're carrying out the Mann-Whitney, is that we're performing a test of the differences in the average of the ranks on the dependent variable across the two groups. So in other words, the dependent variable is, um, is, um, uh, is, assi uh, is uh, converted to ranks. Um, and they're ranked across the two groups. So we're not ranking within the two groups, but we're ranking the dependent variable across the two groups from low to high. And uh, then we compute the, the average of the ranks within each of the two groups, and then we're testing that out using the Mann-Whitney test. So you can see right here that uh, the average uh, rank for the treatment group is 9.94. The average rank for the control group is 7.06. So you can see that uh, overall the average of the ranks is higher uh, in the treatment group as opposed to the control group. And so uh, putting that back into the language that we typically think about, we can say that, uh, that um, persons in the uh, treatment group were scoring higher, on, uh, higher uh, overall um, in terms of achievement as opposed to those in the control group. But again, these are not the means of the actual dependent variable, but rather these are the means uh, the means for the ranks um, across um, the individuals within those two groups. So the Mann-Whitney test, this is the test value right here, and you can see that we get um, a couple of types of output right here. So we have, um, we have an exact test uh, where we have a p-value that's printed out, and this particular exact test is going to show up only in those cases where your total sample size uh, or your total n is less than 40, uh, or less than or equal to 40. If your n is greater than 40, then you'll only be provided with the asymptotic significance level with its p-value. So you can see that when your sample size is uh, 40 or less, 
you'll actually get two types of significances. You'll, you'll get the asymptotic significance and then also an exact significance. Both of these are p-values and uh, you know in general it's probably a better idea just to stick with the exact significance uh, that's printed out as opposed to the asymptotic significance. Uh, but nevertheless the, the p-values for both of these um, uh, versions of the test um, are going to be fairly close to each other. So that's uh, essentially what the Mann-Whitney test is doing. And so just to kind of show you a little bit more in depth what's happening, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to take my dependent variable achieve and convert it from uh, being treated as more of a scale or, or a continuous variable into ranks. And then I'll perform the Mann-Whitney to show you what's going on. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to transform, go down to rank cases right here. And I've moved, uh, I'll just kind of reset this to show you, I'll move the achieve variable over to this box, click on rank types, and we'll leave it as rank. Uh, in terms of the ties, I'm just going to leave it as um, set the, um, uh, when we have uh, tied ranks, uh, take the mean of those ranks. So we'll click on continue, and then on OK, and so now I've generated in my data set um, uh, ranks for uh, each of the observations and so you can see that the values um, are, are, um, are irrespective of group membership and in fact if I wanted to sort on this just to kind of show you what I mean by that you can see that uh, you know this person right here has a rank of one and is in group two this person has a, a rank of three is in group uh, one this person has a rank of three in group two and so forth. So you can kind of see what I'm, what I'm talking about there. So at any rate, what we can do is, uh, let's say that we want to compare the two groups uh, in terms of their average ranks. Uh, so what we can do is we'll just go back in and we'll run our analysis using the man Whitney again. And um, in fact, what I'll do is I'm just going to move the rank variable over, and we'll leave the original in here so you can kind of see the see um, the, the commonalities between them. So if I rerun the analysis, you'll notice that using the original variable right here, the, we have the average ranks. If we use the rank variable that we created, uh, these are the averages. So you can see all of the values uh, are exactly the same uh, between these. And if you look at the Man Whitney test. You can see we have the same test result right here. Uh, our Z values and uh, the P values are all the same. So as I was mentioning before, that basically the Man the Man Whitney test is a, is a comparison of the average or mean rank between the two groups. And so that what that means is that your dependent variable can be an ordinal variable or it could be a continuous variable. But if your variable is continuous, what the program will do is it will automatically convert your dependent variable into ranks and then do, perform the comparison on those ranks. Um, now, why might you do this? Um, one reason might be that, uh, you know, if you have a, particularly if you have a small sample size and you have um, a violation of uh, the normality assumption, which might create a few problems with respect to carrying out the um, uh, independent samples t-test, then you might choose the Man Whitney test as, as a, as a non-parametric alternative. So that might be one reason why you might uh, do that sort of thing with respect to uh, um, a continuous uh, dependent measure. So that's the Man Whitney test. And as I said before, if your sample size, the total sample size is uh, 40 or less, then what you'll get, you'll get both the asymptotic significance level uh, and the exact significance level. And uh, just uh, uh, hopefully it's kind of implied, there would be no reason uh, if you have a continuous measure to uh, manually convert uh, that dependent measure to ranks and then carry out the test because the program will automatically do that for you. So just uh, kind of keep that in mind. Okay, so now, now I want to try a different example. We're going to use state level data and uh, this is just data from a number of different databases that I've put together looking at various uh, social indicators, economic indicators, and so forth. And what I want to do is to show you what happens if your sample n is greater than 40. So I'm actually going to use um, this variable right here as my grouping variable or my independent variable, death penalty, which is coded 0 for a state that does not have the death penalty and 1, which is for a state that does have the death penalty. So let's say that I want to compare um, states uh, within the U.S. 
in terms of, um, you know, that have and, and do not have the death penalty in terms of, let's say, total uh, pupil spending. Let's just say I want to test whether there's a difference between uh, states with and without the death penalty in terms of the, uh, the amount of uh, spending per pupil um, for school, school kids. So um, I'm just, that's kind of off the cuff, but we're going to give it a go. So to carry out the analysis, again, using if I was going to carry out the analysis using the independent samples t-test, I would just go back to compare means, and uh, we would use the uh, independent samples t-test right here. Uh, we could go down to um, essentially our death penalty variable right here, move it over, and we'll put our pupil spending right here. Uh, for under defined groups, um, we have values of zero uh, for no death penalty and one for death penalty. Click on continue and then on OK. And so when we look at our output file, you can see that, um, you know, looking at, we had 17 states that uh, did not have the death penalty, 31 uh, that did. And uh, you can see it's, uh, you know, it's fewer than the uh, 50 states, uh, but I think there was missing data on a couple uh, for the death penalty variable, so that's why we have uh, fewer than 50. But you can see that uh, the average spending um, in the non-death penalty states was actually higher uh, than for the death penalty states. Um, and you can also see that there was a significant difference between the two. Um, now, if I was going to do this analysis using the Mann-Whitney, um, I can go back, and I'll just go back to a non-parametric test, go to legacy dialogues, and then go down to two independent samples here. Um, I'll scroll down to um, finding uh, the death penalty variable and then total pupil spending right here. And define groups, again, we have values of zero for the non-death penalty state and uh, one for the death penalty states. Click on continue and then on OK. And so now you can see uh, with respect to our output, the average uh, rank in terms of spending um, uh, was uh, actually higher for the non-death penalty uh, as opposed to the death penalty states. So in other words, uh, states that actually uh, had the death penalty were um, spending less uh, than those states uh, with the death penalty. So kind of interesting finding there. The Mann-Whitney test result, uh, we have the test statistic down here, it's 68. And you'll notice that we have essentially our Z test and the asymptotic significance. So you'll notice that we do not have that exact significance that we had before, and that's because our sample size is above 40. So uh, in this case, the only um, p-value that we can consult is actually the asymptotic uh, significance level. So that um, pretty well uh, concludes this demonstration of uh, how to carry out the Mann-Whitney test in order to compare groups uh, on a dependent variable. And basically, once again, uh, the Mann-Whitney test is different from the independent samples t-test because the independent samples t-test is assuming that your dependent variable is continuous and you're comparing the two groups in terms of means, or you're comparing mean differences uh, between your two groups, whereas the Mann-Whitney test, you are comparing differences in terms of the average uh, rank uh, between the two groups. And so this is actually a non-parametric uh, test.